<clears throat> the woman walked down the hallway toward her apartment unit. Canadian tire bag in her left hand, containing the light bulbs she ventured out for. Over her right shoulder hung her purse with a copy of Becoming by Michelle Obama inside and some Listerine breath strips. It had been a very long but very pleasant day and it was finally about to wind down with an evening in her home, warm and comfy, mud rose beneath her covers with cinnamon vanilla scented candles burning and hearty food filling her smiling stomach. Her feet were a touch sore from walking in her heeled booties and her cheeks were cold, but she was feeling something different and new that she couldn't describe. Then the song came on, Frank Ocean by Oliver Kamunther. She listened to the wanting in his voice with a silent wonder as he questioned how he would be happy. And that's when she realized what it was. Unlocking the door of her single bedroom, far too expensive, amazingly beautiful apartment, she strolled into the darkness, locking the door behind her when she saw it. The view that took her breath away. She had seen it a hundred times, but tonight it was different. She dropped the light bulbs. The apartment was dark. No lights on, but somehow, even in the shadows and even in the midst of a harsh Canadian winter, it wasn't cold. She faced south, looking through the floor to ceiling, gridded windows at the far end. The curtains were open, and all she could see was the silhouette of her bedroom furniture and the faux palm tree plant. But it was what lay beyond that stole the words from her mouth. The air from her lungs, the beat from her chest. A beautiful, clear night in downtown Toronto and the quiet company of the city lights, non-intrusive and humble, wishing her a happy Valentine's Day. The purse went first, then she pulled off her coat unzipped and tossed aside her shoes without taking her eyes off the window or even blinking. Hands empty and heart full, she walked towards the city as if she was in a trance or some strange dream. She stepped up onto the windowsill and gazed out towards the buildings in the distance, placing her hand on the cold glass. This couldn't be real, right? She sat back on her bed, palms resting in her lap and listened in stillness to the sounds of the music and the city as they danced in perfect harmony. She watched the cars rushing and the darkened figures of couples in their apartments making love and her hands crept up along her arms pulling her into a tight embrace. The tears came to her eyes and poured down her cheeks, working their hardest to satisfy the expression of the feeling inside, but quivering in fear at its magnitude. She fell onto her back, arms spread wide and stared up at the concrete ceiling, laughing ironically as the music played and the lights became blurry. This was it. This is it. Finally. She shook her head in disbelief. A tiny smile growing on her lips. I love you, she whispered. I love you so much. She blew a kiss to the moon and felt her own gratitude bursting from her chest like wild doves. The butterflies were gone, and in their place a field of flowers, dandelions, tiny suns, blossomed. She remembered the little girl. The 
low ponytail and funny sparse eyebrows, the chubby tummy and those cherry printed converse she wore every day, the hurt and the pain and the heartbreak and the abuse, the sadness, the brokenness, the hopelessness, the self-harm, the dorky outfits, the leather jacket the bathroom floor, the boy, the illness, the optimism, the kindness, and the cruelty. She held her face in her hands and looked deep into the little girl's eyes, softly caressing her cheek. And then she spoke. Everything I am doing is for you. Everything I do and everything I am is for you. Because you deserve so much. You deserve so much love. And you deserve so much happiness. So everything I do and everything I am is for you. The little girl smiled and kissed her gently on the cheek, disappearing into the night. The woman lay on her bed, arms still crossed over her chest, hands still softly caressing her cheek and opened her eyes, thinking how proud the little girl would be to see who she becomes. And so up she stood, taking her laptop onto her bed to write the story of the best Valentine's she ever had and the wonderful day she spent with the most important person in her life, the person whom she loved more than words could say, The person who would love her for the rest of her life. She held her in her arms, rubbing her back and thanking her for being what she is. Finally. Happy.